In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text is the epistle which you heard read from Romans 5, especially verse 4, or verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What an amazingly joyful, encouraging, and solid epistle today. Paul has spent the first four chapters of Romans spelling out the rock-solid truth. We are sinners, damnable sinners, who cannot in any way save ourselves. But Christ Jesus is the righteousness of God for us, which is received by faith, a gift of the Holy Spirit to us. In the first half of Romans chapter 5, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul revels in the fullness of what your salvation in Christ Jesus means for today and for every rough, challenging, difficult, and for that matter, good day through which you live. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord's saving work for us can be thought in the terms of a courtroom, judicial language, were declared not guilty in court, justified. It can also be thought of in terms of the family and personal relationships, which is like the word reconciled, made friends again, like the prodigal son welcomed home with joy and thanksgiving. Both are vital aspects of our salvation. On the one hand, we know we're guilty of sin that deserves, even demands, punishment equal to at least eternal death. So it is critical that we know that Jesus is our justification, that is, his payment on the cross is the payment of our full eternal death through his damnation, and it's ours, this payment, and it declares you not guilty before God's judgment seat as you have received all of this by faith poured out on you in holy baptism. So you're not guilty, you're innocent before God, you're cleansed even of original or inherited sin, and so it will be on judgment day as you remain in faith in Christ. You're declared holy, innocent, perfect. On the other hand, we know that there's more to salvation than just not being punished, sneaking out of court, even though we're guilty, but declared not guilty, like we got away with something. Well, Christian, you belong. You belong in God's family. You're a dear member of God's family. Welcomed, cherished, valued, loved. That's what it means when St. Paul writes, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You're at peace with God through Jesus. The, this word peace doesn't mean the mere absence of war. It's not like the peace between North and South Korea, a cold, distant, distrustful, don't you dare watchfulness. Peace here is flavored by the richness of the Old Testament word shalom. Shalom is the last word spoken in blessing at this divine service and practically every divine service here, the ultimate and final expression of the Lord's full blessing. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, which means have his face smile at you. Think of that, the Father's face smiling at you and give you peace, give you shalom. Peace is things being as they ought to be. There's soundness, wholeness, health. It's all that faith can look for. Peace between God and man means that things 
are as a gracious God wills them to be divinely normal. Our new status before God is no neutral state. Being justified does not mean that we merely have gotten off unpunished. It does not mean that we must make our way ourselves as best we can from here on out. No, peace means welcome home. Peace means flourishing in the Lord's family and care. And this peace comes only through our Lord Jesus Christ. As Paul writes in verse 2, through him, through Jesus, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of glory, the glory of God. What a beautiful encouragement for our present and future. We stand in this grace. It's not just a one-time pronouncement. It's a powerful status that surrounds us through living out this peace, this place we have in our history as God has called us. And that, this grace in which we stand, propels us forward, rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. This hope is the solid, certain, steadfast fact of what you will have in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The full glory of God then will not be frightening or destroying, but warm, inviting, joyful, peace forever. will finally be who we were designed to be originally, but without any burden or heartbreak or exhaustion or tears. So now is peace and grace, then will be glory. But this doesn't mean that life on the way to this glory is easy. In fact, Paul teaches it's quite a challenge. We're, as uh, Martin Franzman put it, we're not wafted to the skies on flowery beds of ease. We pass through a difficult and dangerous present to the future and assured glory. Now, doesn't our suffering, the pressures of our life, don't they sometimes make us question whether we have peace with God through Jesus Christ? If God's at peace with me, why isn't my life easy? Well, here is Paul's answer in Romans 5, 3 to 5. Not only that, but we rejoice within our pressures, sufferings, knowing that pressure produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. First of all, notice with this chain that it's kind of odd. It both begins and ends with the word hope, which is kind of a strange chain, isn't it? If it starts at the same word and ends at the same word, it's sort of like it doesn't feel like we're making progress but we actually are. We begin standing in grace, rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. Then there's pressure, which produces endurance, which produces character, which produces hope. In other words, while we are all suffering under different pressures and perhaps in different places in life in regards to endurance and character, All of us Christians are equally in hope. From the beginning to the end, it's all about the grace of God in Christ Jesus who gave himself up for us while we were still sinners, and he still gives and preserves for us this beautiful future hope, this certain hope. But also think about how true this statement of St. Paul is for Jacob and the woman in today's gospel. 
I don't think any one of us here would want to be in Jacob's position in today's Old Testament reading. He's going to meet Esau, the brother that he, uh, well, uh, dressed up as to fool his blind father on his deathbed to get that brother's blessing. Remember, Esau was fuming mad. Jacob fears now the possible deadly reception he's going to get from his brother. He cannot sleep. He wrestles with God. Not one of us would choose this. Yet, what happened to Jacob through this sleepless wrestling night? He confesses his sinfulness by admitting to God that he is indeed Jacob, which means heel, that is, manipulator, liar, traitor. Yes, God, I'm heel boy. And yet, how does the Lord answer Jacob's honest admission? From now on, you'll be called Israel, that is, God's prince. Yes, you are a poor, miserable sinner, Jacob, but you are fully forgiven and blessed by me, and you are now my prince, inheritor of my eternal realm. Who could ever forget such a great and abundant blessing from the Lord? But to get it, Jacob needed the pressure of knowing that he would be seeing Esau, and he needed the pressure of losing a night's sleep with worry and fear. These pressures produced endurance, character, and hope. And what about the woman in today's gospel? Jesus seems so cold, distant, and uncaring toward her. But this pressure was the best thing that ever happened to her. It forced her <clears throat> to keep crying out for mercy and to make it clear that there was only one Savior she could turn to in her heartbreak and fear for her daughter. Not herself, not her goodness, not the greatness of her prayer life or piety or, or the quality of the cookies she gave out to other people or the stunning devotions she had written. Nope, only one hope, one savior, just Jesus. Think of what great joy and certain hope came from the pressure of hearing Jesus say, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to you little dogs. And to the great endurance, character, and hope grounded in the abundance of Jesus' mercy, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. A crumb of your mercy, Jesus, is more than enough for me, for my daughter and he has it for her. And then, for her to hear, what is a word to every woman here this morning who trusts Jesus alone, O oh woman, great is your faith. Great faith means having a great savior. Now, isn't this true for you too? Haven't the pressures you've endured not broken your trust in Jesus, your peace with God, your certain hope of the glory of God? They've actually strengthened your endurance in hope, your character re to rejoice in the Lord in the very midst of your troubles, and giving you that forward lean of the hope of what the Lord has in store for us. Martin Franzman suggests this image for this text, and I think it's beautiful. Imagine you're in a dark, gloomy basement with absolutely no light in it, but there's a door open at the top of the stairs, and warm light pours out, and this light enables you to take each step, rigorous though it may be, up that staircase with joy. Why is it that pressures produce endurance, character, and hope? Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. It's fascinating 
that this is the very first time that the word love, agape, appears in Paul's letter to the Romans. It's right here. That you, dear Christians, well, God's love, his abundant care for you that will never fail you or forsake you, that Jesus, well, that caused Jesus to suffer and to die to save you, that that love has been and continues to be poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been and continues to be given to us. When is it poured out? When was the Holy Spirit first given to you? Well, in holy baptism, of course, and indeed in the gospel, the forgiveness of your sins, and in the Lord's Supper in which the very body and blood of Jesus is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins and poured into you constantly, so, so that though the pressures that surround you will not crush you, instead he enables you to bear it all with endurance, character, and hope that will never fail. For you aren't just declared holy, forgiven, and innocent, which you are, but you are welcomed home, fully wrapped in God's peace, Thanks be to God, in Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which passes all our understanding, <laughs> guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.